All right, folks. Today we're gonna make a little uh, waterproofing uh, stuff. It's almost like a saddle soap. Um, I use it for for uh, all my leather gloves, and I also use it for a lot of my uh, my vintage or classic uh, bushcraft and camping gear, like leather, canvas, even steel stuff like that, to help with the steel to keep it from rusting and uh to waterproof leather and canvas and stuff like that my oil skin tarp that you guys seen in uh my last video that was that was just uh boiled linseed oil on that i used a spray bottle I'll, i'm gonna re i'm gonna be uh reapplying linseed oil actually to that just to give it another coat for this year but uh but yeah that there i put it in a spray bottle thin it down with some mineral spirits and spray down there but today we're gonna be so we're gonna be making a waterproofing agent. And I just picked up two new packs. These are uh, Romanian uh, military packs. This one here is the rucksack. Let me zoom uh, some of you guys out. Hold on. Let's see. Bring you back a little. Yeah. Okay. All right, we got the All right, we got the Romanian rucksack. All kinds of cool features on it. It's uh you know, military surplus from Europe. Alright, I will be doing uh, a review on these at a later date, but uh, for now, we're gonna just waterproof them. So, the video is gonna be kind of long, and if you guys. That's a Harley or a truck? That almost sounds like a Harley. Oh, yeah, so those are Harleys. That's why I can't film at my house. Like even inside my house, that's like loud as heck. Rednecks and idiots, man. That's what, like all I'm surrounded by. Okay. So this is gonna be kind of a long video. If the only thing you're interested in is making the the waterproofing. Um, agents, like I said, it's kind of like a saddle soap. Um, then probably the first 10 15 minutes or whatever is probably for you. But if you want to watch the whole video, we're gonna be applying it to this. And uh, I also got the matching bread bag that goes with it. So, messenger bags are awesome, and honestly. I take a messenger bag with me almost every time I'm in the woods, and uh, for the longest time I've been using a Polish bread bag, and this is the matching Romanian uh, version of, of a bread bag or messenger bag. And I like this because it has the leather straps for a tarp or a wool blanket. It's kind of nice. So, anyways, like I said, full reviews on these later on. For now, let's get to work, boys. Bam. Not looking at the, I can't see my the viewfinder on my camera, so we're just gonna kind of play it by ear here. First things first, we're gonna. This is all by weight. The the ratios basically, and it's basically I like to say it's easy as one two three. It's gonna be one part this. Uh, this is anhydrous lanolin. It's used for all kinds of cool stuff like. Uh, in marine applications to uh, to waterproof and make stuff uh, rust resistant basically on ocean going vessels. It's been used for I'm guessing thousands of years. Uh, look into it. It's really cool stuff. And it's great for uh, there you go, anhydrous. 
You must be great. All right, whatever. So, but it's really, really good for waterproofing stuff. And it's sticky as heck. So it sticks to everything. All right. We got good old beeswax. This stuff here. No, it's beeswax. It's great for, I don't know. It's one. This is one of those things that if you're into camping or vintage gear, you should already know about this. If you don't look it up, there's like, this is one of those things that has a thousand and one uses. And that brings us to linseed oil. Boiled linseed oil. This stuff here, treat it with respect. If you take a rag of this and wad it up, there's a strong likelihood that it's going to catch on fire. It'll spontaneously combust. That means it will ignite without any kind of ignition source other than itself being wadded up in a paper towel or a rag. So treat this stuff with respect. When you're done with it, if you used a rag or something, make sure you hang it up to dry and it's not like wadded up or folded. You know, you lay it out and hang it over something and let it dry. I mean, I, when I'm done with them, honestly, I throw them right in the wood stove. I save them the trouble. You know, you want to spontaneously, spontaneously combust? Boom. I'll take care of that. Throw it in the wood stove. You know, burn barrel, whatever. So, with that being said. Alright, so there you go. It's easy as one, two, three, I said, right? So that means one part this, two parts this, three parts this. That's pretty much what I use. And actually... I say one, two, three, but I actually go a little light on this stuff because I don't know. I always I actually use about a half a part, so it'd be like a half, two, three, you know. But anyways, it goes by weight, so that's why I got my this old postal scale available at places, fine retailers like Walmart and whatnot. I think I paid ten bucks for this like ten years ago, and. Boom, works like a charm. So we're going to go by weight. You're using the scale, hit the tear button. Boom, now we're back to zero, right? Um, let's see, we're going to go 50 grams of this. Like I said, I'm actually going to use a half. So let's go, cause, especially because I'm not sure if I have much more than 50 grams of this stuff in here. Stick. Okay. Like I said, this stuff is like super freaking sticky. Stuff. It, the melting point on this stuff is like right around 100 degrees. That's 46 right there. Boy, you'd almost think I have a lot of experience weighing stuff, eh? I do have quite a bit of experience weighing this stuff. Uh, this isn't the traditional way that I make it for my uh, for my gloves and whatnot. I actually use like a plastic spoon or something, but I forgot it up at my house. I don't feel like walking back in. Because usually I'll, I'll make this in my house. But since I'm doing a video, I figure I'm better off doing it. Doing it here. Like so. Alright. So if that's a half, I'm going to put 200 grams of this in. Which should bring us to about 250. 255 maybe. 231. There you go, 255. Boom. Boy, I've done this before, haven't I? Alright. Right, let's put this sticky messiness away. And here's another thing I, I realized too the lanolin. A lot of times, if you use just this and that, whatever you're using it on will grow mold really easily. This doesn't prevent mold, and neither does boiled linseed. In fact, I think mold enjoys this stuff. 
So, when I started adding lanolin to all this stuff, I noticed nothing ever got moldy, ever. You know, I mean, if you get mold on leather, it's not a huge deal. You can clean it, you know, wipe it off, clean it, and you're good, good to go. But to save yourself the trouble to pull out your gear, and you're like, oh, man, what the heck? There's this white, powdery, mildewy crap mold on it. Well, add lanolin to, your, to whatever you're doing, and uh, that, this seems to prevent mold. I don't know that for a fact, but it's just in my experience. And now, let's see, we said one, two, three, so it's going to be 300 of this. So bringing us to 550 grams out of night. It's not like a, a spark would set this off. There you go. Now when it cools off, it's going to have the consistency of something like this. You know, it's hard. But it's also like 40 degrees out here in my uh, in my shop. But yeah, this is all natural. It's not bad for your skin either. You know, it's not, it's okay to get it on you. There's no, no chemicals. You've just seen what I put in it. All, well, all natural chemicals. Obviously there's chemicals in it. Because anything can be called a chemical, but it's all natural. So, but so is uh, poison hemlock and snake venom. So, sort that one out for yourself. But we let this cool, and then uh, I'll probably let it go 10, 15 minutes or whatever, and then uh, we'll get back with you. Because I'm not gonna let it cool off completely, like and totally solidify. Because it's kind of a pain to apply when it's, because just because it's this cold out but like at typical room temperature it applies pretty easy you know the linseed oil thins everything out enough to where it's it's you know it's relatively soft and i'll show you how to apply it after this and we're getting there it's been probably 20 minutes so it's got a little ways to go before it cools off. But it's getting there. Alright, 
Alright folks, it's been, oh, it's been a solid 35 minutes, maybe 40 minutes, and what we have here is basically a big old coagulated gravy, which is good, it's getting there. Here's a different stick I was using to stir it, and you can see, can you see that? Yeah. It's kind of hard. It's like a kind of a hard pasty stuff. And what you're going to do is you rub that into your gear, you know, whatever you're waterproofing, and then put it near a heat source. And what I do to make it a lot quicker and easier, I just hit it with a with a hair dryer. You can use a heat gun, hang it next to your wood stove. I've done that before. Or a heat vent, if you, uh, you know, like live in town. You have forced air or pellet stove. But yeah, that's the that's the stuff right there. All right, this stuff uh, it's it's good enough for me to use now. It's still a little warm, but it's fine because just the thing is, like when it's a liquid form, you're gonna end up putting if you try like say brushing it on or something like that, you're gonna put way too much of this stuff on and. Uh, you might not like the results. Maybe you want a ton of it on there. That's up to you. Because it'll get kind of a rubbery, waxy feel to it if you have if you overdo it with this stuff. And even like this, I'm probably still going to overdo it. But you can see it's uh, you know it's pasty. You know it's pretty pasty all the way through. And it's probably recommended that you use gloves to put this stuff on. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm just going to, you know, if you're wearing any jewelry, wedding ring, any other jewelry, take that off. Get it out of the way, someplace safe. First thing I did when I got these things, they came right from Romania. Took like eh, three or four weeks for them to come in. The first thing I did when I got them is I washed them because they've been sitting in a warehouse getting warehouse dank smell all over them, which is a cool smell. I don't mind the smell of... You know, the army surplus smell, you know, that, I don't know, it's got that smell to it, you know. But the first thing I did was I washed it because it's just got danky, grimy crap all over it, you know, that you can't really see. But I washed it by hand, all right, and I washed it in my kitchen sink, and the water was black. So definitely wash this stuff before you try waterproofing it and all that. Like, step number one, wash it. Make sure... The item you're working on is, you know, relatively clean. It's got a little bit of lint. Uh, some of my dog's hair on it now. It's been sitting around for a week and a half since I washed it. So, not a big deal, though. Uh, let's see. Remove all the leather straps that go with it. This, this is the bread bag, the haversack. So, it's got three. This one here. I don't know which ones are which. I'd have to look now. I'm here, I might as well look, alright. These two are for your bedroll, and then this one here is for your mess kit. I'm not sure what I'm going to use them all for, because that's the intended military purpose is how they had it. The one that went across the middle, and the flap here, this was to hold the mess kit. And then these here were for your, uh, like the Polish Levu. It would hold one of those. But for me it's going to hold a tarp or a wool blanket. Because you know, these are these are actually really nice bags, and they can be modified to civilian use really easy. All right, so typically, you know, you can use a rag to apply it. This here, this is just a piece of uh, cotton canvas duck cloth. Uh, you can use that. Uh, like I said, it's recommended to wear gloves. I'm not going to this this stuff. It's non toxic. It's not going to hurt you. In fact, it's good for your hands. Make your hands nice and soft, especially the lanolin that's in it great stuff. But let's start with the leather first. So what goes to that? That gives it that nice dark rich color. Right there, that's what you're looking for. And definitely if you're not sure if you want to, if this is going to work for you, like something that you're going to like, try it on an inconspicuous area first. You know, 
know, don't go, uh, you know, head first into doing the whole thing. If you're not sure, you're going to like it. Me, I've worked with this stuff, and I work with leather and canvas. So, I know this is exactly what I want, so I'm just going to do it up. And if you have too much on there, see all that? It's fine. I'll show you how to take care of that in just a minute. See, I got it on front and back. I want this leather to be waterproof. See? Put it through. And here's another important point. When I wash this stuff, I washed it with the leather and all. This is uh, most likely cowhide. It looks like veg tanned cowhide. But one thing I, I didn't do, I did not put this in the dryer. Basically because of the leather. I didn't want the leather to get all hard and brittle. Because this leather is, is old. You know, it does have some scuff marks and stuff like that. I don't know if you can see that. It's right there. You know, this is, these are, you know, they're army surplus. They may have been used, maybe lightly used or whatever. And some of them might be unissued. I think they have different grades that you can buy on, their, on uh, the website. What the heck was the website? I, don't know, I can't think of the website right now. But I can tell you this. If you Google Romanian haversack or Romanian rucksack, Whatever the web website is, it comes up. Like, there's two different websites that pop up that sell these. But you see, look at the difference, the contrast. This is the grain side. This is the flesh side. And the leather, grain, flesh. And it's nice to use a full grain leather, which is good. And for military use, you, you pretty much have to use full grain leather because it has so much more strength than a split leather. Especially cowhide. One thing, your hands might get tired doing this too. Or like me, since I have, you know, obviously I have damage to my hands and wrists. You know, I do, uh, it is a little tiring. I'll make sure you get into all these all these spots right in here. See that? All these little nooks and crannies. All up in there. Alright, those are good. They can sit off to the side for a minute. Now, like I said, with this here, let's put a little spot of it down here, down low. Is this going to be what you want? Hand rub it in there. See the difference there? And at, we're going to heat this up. That's actually going to sink into the fabric like all the way through. But it's going to darken the fabric quite a bit. So, like I said, you might want to test it, or you might want to say, screw it, I'll just use this stuff as it is, and not even wash it. I mean, it's decent gear, as is. Right there, that's what you're, that's what you're getting. Yeah. Smoffy Smoffer can get it all in these joints, like the, see not joints, the seams. All my, uh, fancy lingo here. I mean, that sounds like I know what I'm talking about all the time, but I usually got a good idea. I don't know if I'm going to do the, the rucksack like this. Um, in the video, let's see. Yeah, the video where I did the uh, overnight with just the tarp and the wool blanket, 
that's another Cold War military surplus pack that I use there. That's actually a Chinese military uh, uh, People's Liberation Army, PLA. Uh, I think it was a paratroopers pack, and I made the pack kind of flat to your back. Not that mine was. But that's what they're built to do, so you can put it in your jump pack for parachuting over it. And that there, the way I waterproofed that, I I took just linseed oil, thinned it out with just a little bit of uh, mineral spirits, and then sprayed it. You know, I put it in a just a regular squeeze spray bottle. But my my Polish pack, my Polish bread bag, that was done like this. And it seemed to work pretty good. See, especially like these cracks or these seams right here. I'm get, make sure you open these up. Snap it all in there real well. And another reason why I do this into my uh, my bread bag is because I also like my camera. You guys are seeing this on. That usually gets carried in in this bag. Well, you know, in my in my haversack. It just holds the camera, you know, my case and everything really well. So, so that's another reason why I do it. You know, if I trip and fall, you know, trying to cross a creek, you know, slip on a rock, you know, you know rock hopping across the creek, it's kind of nice to know that your stuff is most likely going to be dry. Try to get under these as best you can. And here's an, actually another important fact while I'm thinking about it. Um, this stuff here is only going to work on cotton or linen canvases. If it's uh, nylon or something, there's, a, there's another way to do it, but it's not with this stuff. This stuff is not going to be what you're looking for. So if you, uh, if a lot of your, your gear is like still nylon or uh, not 100% cotton, this stuff probably won't work that well for you. It'll just make a big mess of your really expensive gear. Like, I wouldn't use this on wool. And I know you... They say you can use lanolin to help waterproof wool. I've, I've never done that. So I would not recommend it to you. But, I mean, the lanolin came off the wall, and the purpose of the lanolin was to, to help keep the sheep dry. So, I mean, I guess there's some truth to it, but the wool ain't on the sheep no more, so I don't know if you really want to put the lanolin back into the wool. Or if you do, maybe there's a special method to do it. I have uh, i don't know enough about it to, to really give you any pointers there. I just know what I know that works for me. You can see... Uh, you guys probably can't see, but if you get inside here, you know, there's, you guys can't see that. If you don't get inside here, that doesn't get treated, because this is going to melt and spread out, but it's not going to spread, like, into areas that you didn't get, you know, not very far anyways. Nice coating right across this ridge right here, where the, where the flap, this is, you know, where the flap is sewn to the back, Look at this right here. Make sure you hit that really well. You know, any seams like that on whatever particular piece of gear you're doing. And I do the, uh, 
I put this on the the shoulder strap too. You don't really have to, I suppose. And this stuff might actually wear onto your clothes. I don't know. I never noticed if it does. But it's going to be in, in tight contact, you know, around your shoulder. So that's totally up to you. I do it. I haven't ever had a, a noticeable problem. Although a lot of my outdoor gear is just, you know, even the clothes I wear. I just wear when I'm out camping or doing bushcrafty stuff, you know. And sometimes I, I wear stuff that I wear any other time, too. So, you know, like today I'm wearing a freaking beetle shirt. Alright, well, we got one side done. So, and now to set this into all the fibers, boom. Hair dryer. This is hair dryer I've had forever. If you look at the condition of it and it's covered with literally crap, this crap. I've used this to to set a uh, leather conditioner on countless pairs of gloves with this stupid thing. Now you can see, it's kind of got this whitish film. This will wear off with time, you know, as it, you know, as you use it and it breaks in. You know, if you've seen my other, my, uh, my Polish haversack, that one there, obviously, that doesn't have much of an issue with any of this stuff. And with that one, though, I put that in a dryer, and it... I didn't like it because it got a bunch of lint, like yellow lint balls from from this stuff. I ended up getting a bunch of lint on it. It was a pain to get it off. I, mean, I got most of it off. I had to basically, if you put if you do put it in the dryer, rather than do it this way, put it in a pillowcase in the dryer so that way you don't get this crap all over the inside of your dryer. And then uh, after that. I would say if you have a bunch of lint on it, you're still going to want to hit it with a hairdryer to help get that lint off. It'll melt a lot of it because a lot of that lint is basically just wax that got balled up. So well, that's what you're looking at, you know, for now until this gets worn in some more. But it makes a huge difference on the leather. Now, I'm not going to do the inside of the pack. I don't really see any necessity to do that. But I'm going to do this here. I might do this. I'll probably do this part here. And then uh, the inside of this I'm going to do as well. So, and basically, it's more of the same. You know? Drive in there. And the heating it up is what sinks it and sets it into the fabric. So it's not going to come out anytime soon. And depending on how often you use your gear, like this here, 
I wouldn't do redo this probably ever. This will probably last the lifetime of the year. You know, you're talking years this stuff is going to be in here. But some of the heavy wear pieces, the bottoms, and maybe parts of the top right in here, right over here, stuff like that you're going to want to redo. And the leather you might want to touch up, say, once every few months. But as far as the, the body of itself, uh, this stuff, once it's in there, it ain't coming out anytime too. It ain't coming out very easily, ever. Under these buckles, you know, any buckles that your gear has, in them, around them, under them, all through them. You know, that's the thing, if you're into traditional gear. Or like old school gear, like me, you're gonna you're gonna find that there's special care that you have to do with them, you know, to make it last, you know, longer. You know, just you know, general maintenance and taking care of it. Whereas a lot of your sill nylon stuff, you, know, you can patch it, stuff like that. But there really isn't. I mean, how much maintaining is there of it? You know, keep it clean, air it out when you're done with it. Which you're going to do that with this stuff too. I'm going to try to keep it clean, air it out if it's been packed away for a while. Or in the case of when you buy these, they've been packed away for like 30 years or more. So, in those cases, you're going to want to wash it. Like I said, I wouldn't run it through a tumble dryer if it has leather on it. It might mess with your leather a little bit. Or damage it. Not mess with it, but actually damage the leather. If it's old leather, you don't crack and brittle. But once you dry it, you know, wash it and then apply this stuff to it. Or any kind of conditioner. Not just this stuff. Any kind of conditioner in general. Well, you're good to go. You can do whatever you want with that piece of leather, you know, within reason. You know, normal wear and tear, it's good to go. And this stuff here is really good at protecting metal, too, like I said. Um, the, the barrel on my 3040 Craig, that had some rust on it. I hit it with some quadruple off steel wool, cleaned it off, and then uh, added a similar mixture to what I got here to the barrel, you know, just applied it to the outside of the barrel, and so next to the wood stove, and reapplied that, the stuff, you know, the stuff here, reapplied it every, uh, every day for about two weeks, and it's real simple, you just, you know, put it on, rub it on, you know, the barrel is smooth, there's nothing, it's not like this, it's super, super simple and easy to do.
And here's this one. I'll put back together. All the straps back on it. Back together here. And like I said, all this stuff here, it'll wear its way into the, into and off the fabric, you know, excess stuff. It's good gear. It's made to be used. So use it and this stuff wears right off. Not a huge deal. But that's how you do that one. It is, I don't want to say it's noticeably heavier, but, you know, that's one issue you're going to, you know, if you're into this kind of gear, you don't even worry about it. But, you know, weight, this is a lot heavier than a lot of other haversacks out there. You know, this is made of canvas, leather, and steel. So it's, this isn't ultralight gear. But I'm not a through hiker either. I don't hike, you know, 20, 50, or 100, 150 miles. So, typically the gear I use is traditional stuff. Stuff that can really take a beating. And uh, I do have some lighter weight gear. Because I, I do want to hike the Northville Placid Trail. That's actually uh, something I've wanted to do for a long time. And I'm hoping in the next year or two, a couple years, maybe I can get to do that. But, and I do have lighter modern gear. I just don't use it that often. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this pack, too. You know, this is a really nice pack. I don't want to do the uh, linseed oil, so... I'm going to do this pack, too, but I'm not going to make you guys sit through that. You see you see how it, how it works, you know? You go from this to that, basically. You know, with the leather, with the canvas. So, if you're cool with that, then maybe you want to give this a try. If you want me to make you some, I don't know, we can work something out. I do, I do sell this stuff for leather and it comes in a tin like this this tin's empty but I get like five bucks for one of these plus shipping but but if you're interested I don't know it's up to you you know if you want to buy it cool if you don't I don't lose sleep over it I, I work at 95 and I'm not worried about retiring off selling uh, leather conditioner so with that folks have a good one. I'll see you guys out in the trails or out in the water here soon, right? Uh, take care of your gear, right? That's what, we, that's what we're doing here, just taking care of some gear. And like I said, oh yeah, I want to do, a, I will be doing, when I get some use out of these, put some mileage on these, I'm definitely going to do a review, let you know what I think of them. So, until next time, I want you guys to have a good one. If you watch this whole video all the way to this point, I hope you subscribed or threw down a like or something, you know, so check out my other videos, check out other videos, get outside and enjoy life, all right? I know I say it pretty much in every video, dude, you only live once, go do your thing, because you only get one shot at this, so have a good one, guys, peace out. Hey, we got a little bonus feature here, guys, I did end up doing this pack. And I realized I did forget one important step to tell you guys about when you're using this stuff. Um, like on, on the gloves, you don't really need to do this. Uh, once you heat it up, it's usually pretty good. But if you have an excessive amount of this stuff on here, take a look at this. So that's all. Like I hit that with the, uh, with the hair dryer a couple of times and melted the wax into it. Now you gotta remember, this is a wax when you wax your car well if you wax your car you buff it right so honestly you have to the leather when you apply wax it should be buffed afterwards I'm just gonna give a real quick buff that's all I've been doing here for the last few minutes is going through over all the leather on this and just giving it a quick buff kind of a time-consuming little little thing that you really have to do otherwise it's just gonna look messed up yeah it's gonna look not good you know so and honestly I'm just giving this the, all the leather on this pack a quick buff I'm gonna let I'm gonna let it sit 
inside it's still cold up here we got uh we got snow last night so just the dusting we didn't get a lot but you know it's still cold we're using our wood stove at night and well during the day it didn't get out of the 40s today it was a little 40s fahrenheit so needless to say my wood stove's going inside the house and my wood stove in here is just about out so i'm going to be heading in but i want to show you guys this all this quick this did come out pretty good. When I'm completely done with it, it'll look pretty sharp. And you guys will eventually see it. But I'm not going to go through and buff the whole thing perfectly right now. But there you go. Now that's um, this part of the pack when it was used for the military, your helmet went in here. And uh, honestly, this makes a really nice hatchet sheath. I wouldn't put an axe in here. It'd be a bit heavy. It is reinforced on the back side with leather and right there's the snap. That side. It's stitched in the other side of your grommets right there. So uh so yeah you buff it and it gets all that excess uh white waxy material off and uh the rest of that's on the canvas. You can even buff the canvas too. I did forget to mention that. Um, that's basically one of the ways that I got the. They're like lint balls, I was telling you, right? Uh, that I got that off of there. When I did the. Uh, when I did the Polish. My Polish pack. My Polish uh, haversack. With that, what I did was. After I got all the lint balls on it to get it off, I hit it with the uh, with the hair dryer again, and then buffed it down, you know, right onto the fabric. And you guys, if you've watched any of my videos, you've probably seen that a couple times, I'm sure. But that's what I did with that. So I'm gonna finish this up, and I'm gonna head inside. I'm starving. It's like 11:30, so it took me an hour and a half to do this pack. To get all the leather done, and I still have to buff it. So that's no to just buff it quick. It'll take me probably another 15 minutes to do it right, at least a half hour. So, but I'm gonna just do it real quick. 15 minute jobby job on it. Hang it up by the wood stove, and then uh, buff it again tomorrow. Just like actually get a nice rag and make it look pretty. But so now with the bonus content here, if y'all are still watching. What do you guys do to take care of your uh, old school gear? You know, your your old canvas gear. You know, usually like your old canvas gear, it's going to be, uh, a lot of it's going to be military surplus. You know, that's what most of mine is. I'm trying to think. I do have some stuff that's military surplus that's not, but 90% of it's military surplus. Um, that and your leather. How do you guys uh, maintain the leather on your gear. I know all you uh, bushcrafters out there, most of you like your leather and canvas, right? I know I do, and this is one of the ways I care for it, to make sure it's going to last me a long time. Not that this was a huge investment. Um, I, just, I never looked up the website, so like I said, you can look that up still. And But anyways, this and... This matching bread bag cost me $51 shipped to the United States from Romania. So for 50 bucks, you get a nice matching set. And if you want to put in a little elbow grease, you know, you can really make this leather shine. You know, it's good quality leather that they use. Nice heavy canvas. Um, I'm gonna. I will do a review of this after I get some mileage on it, though, and give you guys an actual real deal. You know what I think of it. So, till then, you guys have a good one. Carpe diem, folks. Seize the day. You don't know how many you got left. This might be your last one, so make it count. Take it easy.